Marker. Great. Action. It's about an equation in, in relationships which I think goes on, but is, is not necessarily admitted to. It goes on a lot, and that, that is an uh, older guy, younger woman. He has the money, she has the body, and uh, I, I think that that happens. He's living with, a, I guess what was called a, like a trophy girlfriend. She's half his age, and she's very sexy, and he has the credit card. And to a certain extent, both of them accept this equation. But at the same time, there seems to be some kind of connection between the two. You want us to move in with you? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think it would be great, you know, that, that you move in first and then we, you know, uh, and then we see what happens with the kids. Without my kids? Well, I thought that, you know, you, you and I would, you know, start out, get the thing up to speed living together and they would stay with your husband and then we would play it by ear. Are, are you insane? You think that I would move in with you without my children? Good Dog is about the, the trials and tribulations of our, of our main character, George. His personal life, his working life, the relationships that he has with people at work, the relationship that he has with his girlfriend, Claire, the relationship that he has with his friend, Doug. And it really just follows his, uh, his craziness, his insanity. So she's moving in with her two kids? If she's moving in with her kids, what am I going to do, abandon her children? I thought the idea of the show was you and sex with a 30-year-old model. Now, now it's a family show? Now it's everybody loves George? The show is about me and sex with a 30-year-old model, okay? And how that sex gets better with age, all right? There's a lot of truth in it, and I think people can expect to laugh and also find some poignancy in, in what they're laughing at. We'd love to see her move in. That would guarantee a green light for the show. However, we would not like to see the two of you move in for the sake of that green light. That would be a horribly cynical basis for a relationship and not the kind of show we're looking for. George is not a redeemable character. He's not a, a particularly ethical person. Um, he is not a particularly um, generous person or good. But he performs in a way that a lot of us think or would like to perform. But we don't want to see ourselves in that way. Claire, all I'm saying is that, that, that there's a very large picture of Neil Young to have hanging in the house. I'm not saying, like, you can't bring your children into the house, but, you know, this is a guy who actually rhymes peace and thought police. Do we want that hanging in the house? I think that's the best place for the Neil Young picture. Yeah, I think it's great. Is Ken anything like George? That's a very good question. A question that a lot of people have been asking. I see a lot of similarities, and it seems to me that a lot of his writing comes from personal experiences. He's been telling me all sorts of stories as we've been shooting, you know, how he created these scenes based on actual events that happened with him, and then maybe just embellished a little bit. But I think that it's probably a pretty honest depiction of himself. My kids were talking about a hybrid the other day. You know, I saw this TV ad for a Prius. The guy takes his hands off the steering wheel and the car parallel parks itself. That's the kind of system I need for my entire life. Even during sex? Especially during sex. Whoa. Well, with sex, I prefer the hands-on method, thanks. Uh -huh. I was thinking I should get a hybrid. You have a car. It's an ancient wreck. The mechanic says that the engine is shot. Uh-huh. And uh, do you know what an engine does? Yes, I know what the engine does. And what does the engine do? It moves the car. And how does the engine move the car? It does stuff. It goes around or up and down. It makes a lot of noise and the car goes. Yeah. Maybe this is the wrong engine. top. He's a character who forever is doing things that get him in trouble and falling into holes. And how does he get out? And how does he 
get through it. And that's always fun to watch. I'm not going to get into business with your ex-husband, I'm sorry. He's unemployed. He's having a hard time. Oh, I thought unemployment was his profession. You know, has he ever really worked? When I met him, he was in the construction business. Yeah, I'm sure burying people in cement, I bet. Aren't these jokes about him getting a little tired? Do you like this? How much is it? I just asked if you liked it. Cut. Good. I play the character of Claire, George's uh, live-in girlfriend. And she's an ex-model who has two young children and her Austrian nanny in tow. So why would your broker call you to come down for a meeting? He wants to review my portfolio. Well, what happened to the phone call? This doesn't sound good to me. What well, doesn't sound good? It's a portfolio review. No, I don't know. What don't you know? Well, it's just I've never heard of it, this face-to-face -face with a broker thing. Maybe this is the new post-Bernie Madoff morality, where they tell you you've lost everything right to your face. I haven't handled my money very well, thank you. Well, I don't know. Can you say something besides, I don't know? Okay, well, where's your broker's building? Bay and Adelaide. Bay and Adelaide? It's expensive parking. I can afford the parking, all right? See the stuff? The stuff is worth a bunch of What do you think of this? I don't know. You know what? Nobody pays these kind of prices for this stuff anymore, right? Not in this economy. Nobody is buying this kind of art. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, how much is this? That's been sold. Been sold? Yes. Do you have any idea how expensive parking is downtown at Adelaide and Bay? Any idea? Okay. I can afford the parking for one hour to see my broker about my portfolio. Okay, not if right? you're being Bernie Madoff, you can't. Okay, can you stop with the Bernie Madoff thing? Doug is an unemployed writer. So he's got some work that he does. You know, so he, he's usually unemployed. And he's a bit of a slacker. But I think that with the writing that Ken has done with this is, I think he's okay. I think there's a big part of Doug that's content just being who he is, walking around, talking to George, doing what he needs to do. He's got some insights into things. A lot of them are bad, but he believes them and really tries to help George. And, I, and I, I didn't mean a commitment between two people. I, I meant a commitment, you know, to the environment. I mean, the car is a very big environmental, you know, commitment. That's why I was thinking of a hybrid. Yeah, well, the hybrids have their issues as well. Do you know what they do with those batteries when they die? No. Neither does anyone else, you know? Hybrids are a problem. Look, you don't need to give me an excuse for not wanting to buy me a car, okay? Without any excuses, if you don't want to help, that's fine. It was really about chemistry, you know? Um, I, I got along with her from the moment I saw her in Los Angeles and I remember in the casting session we'd seen a number of people one day and she was the last person to come in and I went to the washroom and I came back and as I came back to the, to the audition suite I passed through the um, reception area where the actors would sit and she was sitting there and there was just something, I don't think I even said two words to her and there was just something I could tell that there was a little bit of kind of chemistry and that I could kind of deal with this person. She was very easygoing and very nice and, and um, self-effacing and wasn't tightly wound and I thought that, you know, it was just something that appealed. What do you think of that? Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. What does Nicholas want for this? Let me check. I think it's one of his most important pieces. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, so do I. So do you. So do you. I don't know what you're talking about. What's this with the thumbs up? You don't get thumbs up to art. Okay, I'm being polite. I don't even know what the hell important means. Important's a hard word, okay? They use it to describe the quality of a piece of art. Well, why didn't you just say it's his best work? Because best is not an art word, okay? Important is an art word. It's 20,000. Oh, well, I think it's an incredibly important work. Well, I had that character in my head, you know? and he was just the voice of the character on the page. It wasn't about his physical stat stature. It was about how he sort of approached the script that was on the page, how he interpreted it as an actor. And this guy got it. Well, I think that was a pretty clear endorsement. Of? You know, of my sexual, you know. Your sexual what? You know, I, I don't like to use the word prowess. In fact, I don't like the word prowess, but my sexual, you know, prowess. I mean, look, you got Gunner with the, you know, the six-pack abs and the big biceps, 34 goals last year. And who do they, uh, you know, get to play center in the big game? The veteran. And you're the veteran. 
I'm the veteran. They obviously think I still got the big slap shot. Okay, do you want to know Anita's reason for choosing you? Well, they, they said it. They said, you know, I was a decent person. I was physically fit. I was intelligent. Yeah, they also want someone that wouldn't threaten Gunner's masculinity, someone that he wouldn't be jealous of, someone old and sexually non-threatening. On the surface, what you see is sort of the stereotypical, like, oh, she's much younger and and she just, you know, is, is with him for his money, which I think, I think, you know, to an extent that's true. She is attracted to a certain type of lifestyle and she wants the better things in life. She enjoys shopping and George indulges her in her shopping sprees. But I think that there is, you know, there is a deeper connection between them as well and they do genuinely care for each other. Here, he, he says he holds up his hand in peace and then he rhymes it with Thought police. How can you rhyme I'm the word peace and thought police? I don't know. Yeah. And, 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 and this is the favorite song of the woman I'm living with? The, you know? Uh, well, okay. Well, but how big is the picture? Oh. Five feet by six feet. Oh, that's large. I think Doug is his loyal advisor. That's really what he is. I think they're very good friends. I think if you look at it, it doesn't really make any sense why they're friends, you know, but they get something from each other. I don't think they talk a lot about how much they like each other, but I think George confides in Doug, and the amazing thing about the writing that Ken has done is that it actually makes sense in the moment. A lot of the show is life in the city, you know, their surroundings, and, and, and it shoots Toronto for Toronto. It doesn't doesn't try to make it look like New York or someplace else, or it, it, it is what it is. So the network called me today. They called you? Yes, they think I might split up with you because you're unstable. Me, unstable? They actually didn't use the word unstable, they used the word crazy. But uh, my craziness is my act. I mean, that's uh, craziness is what I do for a living. What did you say to them? I said that I love you and that we have a great relationship, but that my kids come first. Use the word love. I use the word love. Good. That's a good network word.